in this video series we're going to work on creating a hoover effect here having these labels here above and you can see here the lines will show us the value here but also when we are at the very end it will make sure that the labels stay just within the chart area range so let's start look how to do this so let's start look how to create the hoover cross here and label in chart.js 4 and this is part one of this video series what we need to do first of all is to make sure we have the boiler template like this. You can find this here on chartchest3.com getting started and this link you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here, scroll down and copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. Next, if you want to get the source code of this video and many others, check out my Patreon page here where you can become a member and get source code of many. And of course, if you want to join, we have a new Discord channel here. So check it out and join as well. So what we're going to do here is let's go down here and look at this. And first thing what we have to do here is to convert this into a time chart. Or basically the scale will be a time scale. But for that, I need the date adapter. So I go to chartjs.org, click here on ecosystem. I'll just scroll down quickly, go to the adapters, and then select the date FNS. You can use any of these, but I prefer this one. This one only requires one JavaScript file to be added up or to add on our browser or on our file. So that's what we're doing here. I'm going to grab this specific file, the charges adapter date FNS bundle, minimize JavaScript file. So we're going to scroll here down, go down, make sure you load it out of the charges library. Save that, refresh, nothing happens yet. But now we have the date adapter that we can implement. So what I'm going to do here is going to say here in the X scale, because I want these here instead of days, it should be the date exactly that we specify. And of course, I want to make sure that this is a line chart. So I'm going to say here, um, a type. And the type will be, of course, the time for the date adapter. And then we're going to say here for the time, we're going to show now the unit will be every single day. If I save this refresh, nothing happens. Why? Or at least it, it refreshes, but it blanks out because we need to start working on the dates and structure. So let's start to work on this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in this. Basically, we're going to put in here two values in here. So the X value will be, of course, the date. So in this case, I'll just grab here the current date or let's say the, the month, um, July 01. And then for the Y, I'll just make number three. If I save this, refresh, we have now a item here showing. All right, what I will do is I will just add up here a few more, let's say seven items in total, and I remove this one here. You could leave this and then you could have here the dates and then here you have the numbers. But I like this uh, data structure here because it will be very useful. And most, most data is like this. So I'm going to just put in here some numbers with a multiplier of three, of course. And there we are, save, refresh. There we are, we have this, but now I need to change this to three, four, five, six, and seven, save. All right, so now we have this date here. So what I want to do here is to create a line that will highlight the highest date or the last date here. Then with a dotted line nicely with a label here, but I need to make sure that to do that, this scale will move to the right side. I'm going to scroll down here, say comma, and then we say your position. And then of course, sorry, that's not on the X scale, no, because we're working with the Y scale. Make sure the Y scale goes there. So I'm going to say a comma, position, and then I'm going to say here, position will be right instead of the left side. There we are. Okay, so this works. So now what I want to do is I want to just start making a plugin. So I'm going to say a comma, Let's say plugins, and then in here we'll probably have two plugins. So I'll just call this first our let's call it our static label. I'm not sure if that static label will be the right one, or maybe the close label, something like that. I'll just name it static because it will not be triggered on Hoover effect. So I'm gonna say constant static label, ID static label, and then we're going to start working on it. We're going to say when would we like this. Uh, label when the dotted line is to show. I want to make sure we'll show the dotted line 
before we draw this item here so we're going to say before the data sets has been drawn we're going to put in this static label chart args and plugins then I'm going to say here constant because we're going to do here object destructuring equals chart then in here well let's see what we need here well probably we need well we definitely need the CTX we'll be needing a chart area because we want to get the coordinates within the uh, chart area so let's say a top bottom left right and then width and height do we need them all probably not but just in case height is felt like that yeah there we are next what i want to do here is the scales x comma y and then we're good to go here so i'm going to say here ctx.save to save all variables above so once i did this what I want to do here now is to create the so-called static line. Static line. And then next I want to have a static uh, bubble or something like that. And finally we'll have the static, not really static, but you get what I mean. Text. So let's draw one of them right now. So we're going to say here to do this. To understand how we're going to get that, I need to know the last point here, whatever the last point is. So we're going to say here, um, constant last point equals, and then I'm going to grab here the value of that. To do this, what I need to do here is probably the, we can do here probably data as well, I realize. Let's make, make this here above. We're going to get the data object as well, comma. Now we can see a data dot data sets. We're going to assume in this case we only have a single data set. So index zero, data dot length, then minus one. We'll get the value which would be basically the last value here. Of course, if you have a min and max, there might be a slight slight difference in this, but uh, I'll cover it probably later on. So what I want to do here next is to get uh let's see here i want to have the line i want to have a line from this point to whatever this last value is so what i'm going to do here C uh, ctx dot begin path and i realize probably it makes sense to have this one above so it's the last point and here we can start working on this so begin path and then i'm going to say ctx dot move to which is the starting point of our line and where do I want to start? I want to start at the very left side here on this line. That is the chart area left. Then I need to have the Y coordinates, which is basically, if we start here, we have to go from this point slightly down. That's basically how it works. How many pixels I need to go down, depending on the value we have. So if I have this item here where I'm getting the last point, let's see what this value basically gives me. So we have an understanding of that. So we say here, console log, save, refresh. Open up the developer tab, you can see here the value of six. So the value of six would give us index number six. So that would mean if I want to grab, let's look at this here, the data here, I need to go into the Y, which is number 21. So what I can say here, I can grab this data, and then let's put it in here, put this in a bracket, and then we say dot y. By doing that, we're getting now the value of 21 in here. All right, this here becomes very useful. So let me just grab this right now. And what I want to do is this is the value of the y, but I have to convert whatever this point is of number 21 into a pixel. So we're going to use a built-in chart GS functionality, we say y dot get pixel for the value of number 21 or whatever this value is once we did that i'm going to say ctx line 2 and then we're going to continue on all what i want to do is from this point because now we're starting here all the way to the right side so all we can do here is just copy this put it in here right instead of left and then we can say here ctx dot uh, stroke to draw the line, save that. All right, we get something miss or something is missing. Number one hundred. So let me double check. Of course, 
You can see here I have only one parenthesis. I need another one for the line two. Save, refresh, there we are. So now we have this line. Let's finalize it, which make it a dotted line and control the color of this. So I'm going to say here, CTX dot line width, maybe for the thickness. Let's make this two pixels. Then I'm going to say CTX dot um, stroke style for the color. And let's make this uh, gray. And finally, if I save that, refresh, there we are, we have a thicker line. Finally, I want to say CTX dot set uh, line or set dash line, if I'm not mistaken, because we want to have the pixel or basically a broken line or a dotted line. So we're going to say six pixels solid and then six pixels white space. Save, refresh, uh, set line is not a function, so it's probably set line dash. Makes sense. We want to pinpoint that specific item. All right, so as you can see here, and if you look very carefully, we have here something that's bleeding over. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that this dotted line will not bleed over to any other element that we have. To do that, you just make this blank, so it will understand to reset the value. And now you can see here, everything else stays normal, and that's it. Yeah, that's the first one. Next one, we're going to work on making the label text here. 